Welcome to the Collective Arcana, a channel all about tabletop gaming. So today I just want to do a quick tutorial on how to paint stone quickly. Um, so I have this guy here that I started and I just kind of hit the base with some dark paint just, just to have uh, while I painted on him and worked on him. Um, but I'm going to paint over all that so let's take him off. So this model came with a clear plastic base. So let's see if you can see that. See how the light shows through in the parts that I just quickly painted and missed? So these clear plastic pieces can be a little bit of a pain. Um, so what I'm gonna do first is paint the whole thing black uh, as a base coat. And I'm even gonna take the inside plastic and paint that as well so that any leftover spots that might still be showing through will be covered still from the other side. I'm also going to flip this over and put some paint on the inside, especially where the model's feet will go in because I don't want to clog that up with paint. Uh, but if I paint the back side because it's clear plastic, it will look like I painted it and then I don't have to worry about paint peeling off in case I don't want to glue the model into uh, this base uh, in case you want to take it off and stick it on top of a castle or something. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do next. Okay, now I just have to let it dry before we do the next step and I do get impatient with paint sometimes and I'll keep painting when things aren't all the way dry but we are doing dry brushing next so it does have to be dry otherwise it will smear and you won't get the effect that you're going for. Um, so the good news is this paint dries fairly quickly so once it is dry I will be back. Once your black paint is dried uh, you're going to want to lay down the gray color. So what I like to do for this step is to do a heavy handed dry brush method. I'm not going to work to get into every nook and cranny like I did with the black. I'm going to hit the highest surface points, but I'm, I'm going to do it heavier than a normal dry brush. I don't know if it really counts as dry brushing. Um, and so for this method, I like to use uh, makeup brushes rather than regular paint brushes. There's a couple of reasons for that. One, you can get makeup brushes cheaper than paint brushes a lot of times, especially if you go to discount stores. Um, there are brands like e.l.f. that sell really nice makeup brushes for cheap. The bristles are really easy to clean. Um, this is like an old one that I used for actual makeup <laughs> and it is retired, so it got moved to the dry brushing collection. I've even like cut the bristles down and stuff, uh, but it's the perfect size for what I'm about to do, so um, just something to think about. Okay, so I just have a good old fashioned gray, nothing fancy. Uh, I actually added a little black to it because it was lighter than I wanted it to be. A lot of times for this, I have this uh, shade of, of gray that's got kind of a purpley brown tint to it that I like to use. You can see that. Uh, plum suede is what it's called. Uh, but since that's kind of a specific color, I thought I'd do this tutorial with just regular gray. Uh, but that color does kind of look more uh, natural than just typical, the standard gray, just because it's got a variance to the, to the color that it is. Um, but for today, we'll just use regular gray because that's what most people have access to. Uh, so if you don't have a dry brush, uh, I'll probably do a video about that later, but it's it's pretty straightforward. You're just taking your brush and getting a little bit of paint on it and just kind of hitting the surface. And like I said, this is more of a heavy handed dry brush. And again, I don't even know if you should call it dry brushing, uh, but I like to put a little on my brush and I smash it on my hand and kind of wipe off some of the excess. Normal people probably do this on paper towels, not their hands, but I'm not normal people, so. Uh, and I just am gonna go over the surface. And I'm gonna do it a little heavier than you would do on say a mini, um, or if you're just doing highlights. So about like that thick. 
and we're just going to do that all over. Okay, so you could stop here. As you can see, it looks pretty good. It has good contrast. You can see a lot of texture. Um, I think a lot of people probably do stop here, but we're going to go ahead and take it on to the next level and we're going to add another shade of, of color to give it more depth. So what I did was I took some white uh, and then I'm just going to add some of the gray that I was already using so that we're kind of in the same ball field. I'm going to mix those together to make a lighter gray. And then I'm just going to dry brush again, but this time I'm going to use a much lighter hand and only hit certain areas. So I want to hit the very top here. And don't worry if you feel like you messed up because this is actually really hard to mess up. And I would do the smaller sections when you uh, got some of the paint off with these larger sections. So now I'm going to do these little stones here. Very light hand. You can see this would be a great technique to make a snow effect if you did. Uh, bright white. Maybe even mix like the littlest, tiniest bit of blue in there for a snow effect. These big pieces. I'm probably not even going to reload my brush at all. Because I want very little paint on here. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is add an ink wash. And an ink wash is literally just watered down paint. Um, I know that you can buy fancy paints and they label them ink washes and layers and all this stuff, but really it's just watered down. So I'm going to use the cheap craft store paint <laughs> and I'm just going to add a little bit of water to it. Actually a lot of water to it. Maybe even more than that. And I'm going to add this paint all over the stone so it gives it a sort of uh, mossy look. Okay, so you're going to start at the top and throw it on there and then don't panic because you're just going to thin it out after you lay it down. So as you can see, it's pretty, pretty thick on there right now. And I'm going to wet my brush with just water and I'm going to spread it out. And the first time you do this, you might panic a little and think, oh no, I just painted all over my rocks and they looked fine before I did this, but you just need to thin it out. It just looks bad the very first uh, layer you put on, but then you can, you can move it around. more um, so you can also sort of dab up places where it's really heavy dabbed up more than I wanted there and this will also add texture and you can kind of just do that here and there let your gray from underneath poke through a little thicker in other places and any place you feel like it's on way too thick, it'll come right up. It's pretty easy to correct. Just play around with it. This part's pretty flexible. And it's pretty hard to mess up too, so... I think I like a little more green on that top. I also do this when I want it to dry faster. <laughs> okay, so now I'm just going to add one more ink wash uh, that's going to be almost completely black. I did add a little bit of... Um, brown in there. It doesn't really make a big enough difference to worry about, but um, I'm going to go ahead and do that just to, in hopes that it, it peeks out a little bit, but I'm going to do a really thin wash here, but I am going to use a lot of it so that it does settle into the cracks and that'll give me the contrast um, in the deeper parts. But this also ties together all the colors underneath. It kind of makes them look like they belong together a little bit more 
when they have this little thin veil of one color over them. So that's why I add this step. Okay, so for this step, you can see it, it it's piled on there pretty thick and I'm absolutely going to dab up the highlight sections. Otherwise, kind of lost some of the stuff that we did in the prior steps. So um, very lightly with just some paper towel, I'm gonna dab at it and lift some of that wash up in the highest spots only. Okay, so I'm gonna let that dry and then we're just gonna hit it one last time with a dry brush just to make that contrast uh, look as good as possible. But um, again, it needs to be completely dry before we do any dry brushing. You can, you can be a little more lenient when it comes to ink washes, but uh, with dry brushing, it has to be completely dry. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and give this a couple of minutes and when I come back, we will finish it up. So unfortunately, I lost the last minute of my tutorial here, but um, it was a pretty quick step. It was just to dry brush one last time with a very light green and just a little bit of brown. And it was just to add some more colors in there and make it more interesting. Um, you don't even have to do this step if you don't want to. But this is the final product and I think he looks happy here on his stand. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If there are any others that you'd like to see, um, just leave me a comment and I'll, I'll do a video on it. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, if you could hit subscribe and like, that would help us out a lot. Welcome to the collective and we hope to see you next time.